Hey everyone, my name is Nick from Coffee Before Arch and welcome back to the C++ data structure series. So in this video, we're going to look at how do we implement a simple array based stack. So a stack um, is a fundamental data structure that's used in a lot of different places uh, because it has this last in first out um, kind of operation. So, so what do stacks do? So you can think stack is something that stores data similar to uh, an array or a vector or any other data structure that uh, you're familiar with, um, but the operation of a stack is a little bit different. So what we do is it has two fundamental operations and that is push and pop. So when we push things onto the stack, we gradually push them down. Um, you can think of it kind of like as a box and everything gets put on top at first. You can think of like say a spring in a box and we will push down, push down, push down with every new element. And then finally, the stack will end up being full uh, with the last element added on top. And then uh, likewise, when we do the pop operation, the pop operation takes the first element of the stack and it removes it. So you can think of say, you know, a spring in a box and it will move up just a little bit and put the second element now on the top of the stack. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how we implement that using uh, say an array. All right, so we'll go into stacks, then we'll go into simple stack, and we have an implementation interface and where our main function is. So let's look at the interface first. So fundamentally, what are we going to need? So we'll have a stack class, and within that stack class, we'll have an array, and that will basically be the storage for our stack. We'll have an integer that points to the, or an integer that represents the top of the stack, and we'll use this to index uh, into the stack, which is an array, and then we'll also have a, uh, a variable of size. Now, this is going to be something that we'll have configurable where we can make a stack that has a different maximum number of entries. So um, we'll have a quick constructor and we'll just make a default stack size of 10. Um, like I said, this could be whatever value we want. This is more or less arbitrary. Uh, it just depends on how big of a stack you need for what your purposes are. So uh, then we have, let's see, so we have, we just set the size equal to S, which is the parameter we pass in. We create a new array. So we allocate some memory on the heap um, and we allocate it the size of an integer array of size. And then we put the top of stack equal to negative one. The reason why we do this is because when the stack is empty, uh, there's nothing to index into. So we want to make sure that index isn't valid. So if we did say top of stack equals zero, that would actually be invalid because zero is a valid entry in the stack. We have it allocated. And when there's nothing in the stack, we don't want it to be valid because there shouldn't be anything in there. We shouldn't read anything. So we'll leave it as negative one. Then we'll have a couple fundamental operations, which will be push, then we'll have pop, so push is, like I said, that adds a new item to the stack. And then we uh, have pop, which removes an item from the stack. We'll have peak that we can use to look at whatever values on the top of the stack. And then we'll have clear, which is just a, a it's a convenience uh, method that we'll just call uh, pop until there's no more elements left. And then of course, we'll just have a quick function called print stack that will be, will be used to visualize stack operations. Then we'll leave as uh, private methods because the user doesn't need to know um, these things. Uh, we'll have is full and is empty. So uh, so what, what we'll use these for is when we're doing push and pop operations, we wanna make sure we're not doing anything bad. So we don't wanna say do a push operation or allow a push operation to complete um, if the stack is already full. So we already have the same number of entries in the stack as we have declared size of stack. And that avoids something called a stack overflow, which you may be familiar with the website. Uh, and then there's another kind of thing. So what happens when we try to call empty or pop rather on a stack that uh, doesn't have any entries. So we'll avoid uh, a stack underflow in that case. Okay. So that's going to be our interface. Now let's look at the implementation and how we do that. So this will be fairly simple. So what will we do? Um, so for the push operation, so we'll, we'll take in some data that we want to store in the array. 
an integer in this case, but it could be really whatever we want. We could have had a uh, an array of, uh, you know, another class, an array of objects, or we could have had an array of uh, 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 structs if we wanted to, but we'll just simplify it and use integers. So uh, in this if else statement, we'll first check to see if the stack is full. And so if we try to do push when the stack is full, we'll print out error stack overflow and we'll just exit immediately. Um, this we'll pass this exit failure. Uh, otherwise, we will go ahead and increment the top of the stack. So uh, you have pre and post increment. So when we do plus plus top of stack, if you're unfamiliar, this will increment the top of stack variable before it's used uh, here for the indexing. And so what this basically does is it says, okay, we'll move over one place in the array and we will uh, go ahead and store data D in that position. So basically you can think of as the larger indices in the array closer to the top of the stack, depending on the stack size. So if we have a stack with one item in it, uh, zero is the top of the stack. If we have a uh, stack with two items in it, one is the top of the stack and so on and so forth. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and just print push onto stack and then print stack just to visualize all of these operations. Okay, so then we have stack pop. So this is taking what element is on the very top of the stack, removing it, and then all of the other elements uh, you can think of as being kind of pushed up where the second element now is at the top of the stack now. So uh, we need to avoid an underflow here. So we'll use that is empty function. And that is empty function. We'll just check to see if, uh, if there are indeed elements in the stack still. So then what we'll do is if somebody tries to call uh, pop when the uh, stack is empty, uh, we'll just print out stack underflow and then we'll exit the function or we'll exit the program again. Otherwise, what we'll do is we will um, we'll just clear the current top of stack um, by setting it to zero, and then we'll decrement the top of the stack. So, like I said, um, the top of whatever the top of stack is the rightmost valid element in that array. So we'll just decrease what uh, the top of stack index is by one if we call pop. Now we don't necessarily need to add a zero here because uh, you know that's not a valid entry anymore. So we don't technically have to um, clear it in this case because when someone say pushes onto the stack again, it will be get overwritten anyway. But we'll just go ahead and zero it out. And then of course we'll print out pop off, uh, pop off top of the stack and then we will print the stack. And so let's look at a couple other methods that we uh, uh, that we implement. So one of them will be peak and all it does will um, it will uh, first check to make sure that um, uh, oh, there we go. There's a quick fix. <laughs> so we check to see if the stack is empty first and we're trying to access something that's at the top of the stack. And if we do, we're trying to inset, uh, we're trying to uh, uh, index into a invalid entry. Uh, because in this case, if the stack's empty, our top of stack will be negative one. So this will end up being uh, array of uh, index negative one, and that's invalid, of course. So we'll just go ahead and exit in that case. And then otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and just return array top of stack, and that'll just index the last valid entry that's on the top of the stack. Okay, and then we will do well, here's our clear the stack. And so this is fairly simple. We'll just dump the stack content, uh, contents by looping over. So while the stack isn't empty, we'll just call pop over and over and over. And this even handles the case where you call clear on an empty stack because it will never fall into this while loop. Okay, and then we have our print stack, which is just some prints. So we print out stack contents. We do some clever formatting in order to kind of show it um, as it's normally represented in pictures. And then we'll just print out each uh, element starting from the top of the stack, which will be the latest in the array. And then we'll decrement down all the way to the zeroth element in the stack. And here's our functions just to check to see if the stack is full or empty. So the top of stack 
if the stop top of the stack is equal to size minus one so if we have a 10 element stack and we have 10 elements in in that then top of stack will be equal to nine because the index values will be zero through nine so we check to see if the top of stack is equal to size minus one then to check if it uh, the stack is empty all we need to do is check to see if the top of the stack is equal to negative one because it starts out at negative one when there's no elements so if we say fill the stack and then remove every element in the stack it should increment up to uh, nine and then decrement all the way back down to negative one okay so that's going to do it as far as that goes so let's look at our actual program or our uh, main function so what we'll do is we'll just create a simple stack and so in this case because we're not passing in anything to that constructor uh, it'll go ahead and just make it with the default argument of s is equal to 10. then we will go ahead and add some elements to the stack um, and we'll just add elements just the the data will just be the index value so 0 1 2 3 4 5 and what we should or 0 1 2 3 4 and we what we should see is that the top of the stack should be 4 at the very end because it pushes all the other elements down then we'll go ahead and pop two of the elements off and we can even do uh, we can even do peak as well so let's do simple stack dot peak and we'll look at what value is there and so we can just do C out simple stack peak and then we'll make a new line okay um, and then we'll just clear the rest of the entries in the stack after that all right so let's see how this works so let's do g plus plus dash, uh, dash c on implementation dot cpp all right no problems there and then we'll do g plus plus dash o on stack and we'll, our executable will be stack we'll pass in as arguments to the compiler stack dot cpp and then implementation dot o our object code all right no errors that's good and then let's go ahead and let's give it some space and we'll do stack all right so here we have it. so we start out uh, we've got an empty stack and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll push a single element uh, we'll call push remember we're doing push zero push one push two push three push four in that for loop so we'll push zero then we'll push one and you see that zero gets pushed down then we'll push two two becomes the top of the stack and then zero gets pushed down and one gets pushed down and this continues on right so zero one two three four so all the way up until this point uh, it will be pushing down whatever is currently on the top of the stack and everything below it down one space okay and then when we start popping off elements we start at the top of the stack so we'll pop off four first so we'll pop off stack and then our stack contents become three two one zero we'll pop off another um, element which is three and then we're left with two one zero we'll go we called peak right there so that left us with uh, we looked at the top element of the stack so that gave us a two and then we called dump to dump the rest of the uh, stack contents which just calls pop two more times and so what does that leave us with that leaves us with uh, one and zero uh, and then we pop off one and then we're just left with zero and then we pop off zero again or rather we pop up zero and we're left with just an empty stack okay so that's going to do it for this stack example uh, as you can see fairly simple to implement but it's a very commonly used data structure um, uh, it it's it's it can be very convenient to use to have something where uh, you have this last in first out um, type of structure right so we also saw this with linked lists right so with linked lists we had data that was somehow connected to each other so we could just follow a single path and in this case it's very similar except this time all the uh, uh it's not the individual elements of the uh of the stack that are connected with each other but the stack itself maintains an order okay so uh, all this code is of course available on github so feel free to download this play around with it uh, maybe you have an assignment that requires you to do a, a stack Maybe you need to implement a couple other methods, but this should be a good framework for that. Um, so we have all the other code for the other series, including one on MIPS instruction set, Python 3, uh, other C++ stuff, uh, parallel programming in C++, and some GPU programming stuff as well. 
But if we go to C++ data structures, go to data structures and simple stack, we've got the three files that we used in this video. So feel free to download these, play around with them. There's plenty of comments in there to under, help you understand the code. So hopefully there's not too many questions. But of course, sometimes questions arise. So feel free to contact me either here on YouTube or at coffeebeforearch at gmail.com. And I'll make sure to link all the other videos and files down here in the readme. So, like I said, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and I hope you have a nice day.